Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your casual consumer's perspective review. In today's video, I was able to luckily secure a pair of kicks held through a raffle by Foot Action in Toronto. It's funny because a lot of places had these and the stock was absolutely incredible. If you wanted it, chances of getting these were really high as it could be considered a general release. Launched initially in 1988 and 7 years since its last retro, today I have the Air Jordan 3 Black Cement here for review. In the model lineup of the 3s, the Black Cement colorway was one of the first to drop for the silhouette, highly regarded and labeled with an OG status. This mid-cut basketball sneaker is specifically remembered as the shoe that Michael Jordan wore during the 1988 dunk contest, making the legendary free throw line dunk in the White Cement 3s and winning the contest all while wearing this model. It's also the third shoe to Jordan's lineage, but the first to invite a new yet familiar designer who created one of Nike's most treasured shoe, the Nike Air Max. That's right, it was Tinker Hatfield who designed the Air Jordan 3, making its 30th year since its debut and rumored to be one of the closest remastered to the OG design. Let's take a closer look at these sneakers. So before I start, I have to say this is my first ever Jordan 3 model that I have. I'm not much of a Jordan head myself, but I did start to appreciate the nicer iconic colorways of several models, and this is being one of them. Sporting a genuine black tumble leather throughout the majority of the shoe, visually it creates a very nice texturized design rather than something smooth and dull. By touch, the leather isn't extremely soft as something I felt like the Jordan 1 Royals that I have, but it's still considered plush when I push against it. Both the lateral and medial side of the shoe look parallel to each other for that balanced look. And if we look at the top, we will additionally see a puffy tongue, eye stay paneling, and padded ankle collar all made with grey leather. The material here is also punctured with multiple tiny perforated holes with the utmost precision, which I appreciate to see on such a polished model like this. Since we're on the topic of the tongue area, its surface is also embroidered with a large red Jumpman logo, with a red mesh lining peaking at the top and covering the internal backside of the tongue. The only other red detailing we will see on this upper are the eyelets found at the side, threaded with flat black laces that came with this model. However, one of the more iconic look to this shoe has to be the elephant skin patterning mud guard seen around the toe box and heel backing of the sneakers. Initially introduced first in the Jordan 2s, this eye-catching elephant print made its way onto the 3s to elevate the premium quality of this model. By touch, the leather here feels a little harder than the tumble leather which was to be expected but as a mudguard, it's often better to be more durable anyways. Looking at the back of the shoes, this is basically the highlight of this release as far as I understand. Rocking a clean white Nike Air branding debossed on the rubber backing, the choice of this branding over the Jumpman logo means a lot to many OG design lovers. This is because the original 1988 model of the Black Cement 3s had a Nike Air logo at the time it came out, and the last retro that sported the same logo was in 2001, with the last two recent retros only donning a Jumpman logo instead. That means this Nike Air OG logo finally made a comeback after 17 years. Now that's a long time. Beneath the logo, we'll also see a tough external heel counter resting on top of the midsole. Taking a look inside the sneaker, I have to be honest, it's been some time since I've seen such a padded textile lining inside any shoe. It looks puffy, and by touch, it's exactly like what you would expect touching a fluffy pillow with a soft sweater texture. <laughs> Your ankles and Achilles will be thanking you for such a nice cozy heel rest. Other than that, there's also a non-removable insole inside the sneaker as well, offering increased cushioning for the shoes done in red with the Nike Air branding at the heel in black. As for the midsole, it's created with your regular foam cushioning, but since Tinker Hatfield designed this, he placed a little bit of his trademark on the shoe by bringing over the see-through air unit window design on the heel area. There's also an encapsulated air unit in the forefoot as well, but we won't be able to see that unless we cut the shoes in half. Lastly, flipping the sneakers over, the outsole sports your regular stars and circular traction pattern rubber for the extra grip on the floor. Near the hindfoot region, we will also see a large red Nike text branding on each bottom. Anyways, here are some Air Jordan 3 black cement fit footage. Sizing wise, I bought these at my true to size and they felt snug, but it's the right kind of snug. The length fits great, but I did find the midfoot portion a little tight. However, it held my feet inside the sneaker really well though. And with wear, I can only assume it'll get looser like all other sneakers, especially leather as it will get more relaxed with constant wear. Although the tumbled leather isn't extremely soft, it's still delicate enough that when I started to bend my feet to emulate a step, the leather already started to take shape and crease up. Now I understand why people double up, as it does feel cruel to see such a beautiful shoe age like this, but I guess that's leather for you. Visual wise, it's just beautiful. In my opinion, 
even though I don't really know Jordans that well, I for sure do know about both the white and black cement 3s. The black cement 3s were always the better looking shoe for me personally. Maybe it's because I like the way how the contrasting work between the black leather and the grey elephant skin prints. Comfort wise, I personally find this to be alright. I think I've been spoiled by the amount of shoes that are so much lighter than these, that I think these 3s felt like heavyweights on my feet now. I mean, it does make sense in a way for a basketball sneaker to feel like this, as players would want something comfy yet durable enough for heavy running, jumping, and landing. For casual wear though, a majority of us will be wearing these for the aesthetics and the OG status behind the shoe rather than comfort I would say. That doesn't mean these are not comfortable, it's just they're initially made for different reasons. Cushioning wise, they're reusing technologies introduced in the 80s. It's not the most compressible nowadays, but it's not the end of the world. The insole here will help you with the majority of the cushioning. Price wise, these were 265 Canadian dollars before tax. I believe they already lowered the retail here for the threes this year, just in time for this pair which I was thankful for. I'm more of a Jordan consumer who appreciates the OG status mostly, so being able to add a pair that's close to the OG pair in 1988 makes it that much more special. Anyways, throw me some likes if you liked this video, and let me know in the comments if you were able to cop these or completely drop these. It's funny because even though it was a massive release, I was only able to secure one pair even though I entered around 6 different raffle locations in Toronto. Not like I would be in the position to double up, but I'm happy to own a pair regardless. That's it for today, S2W signing off.